Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Welcome to today's tutorial where I will guide you through creating the highly requested minimal white look in Luminar Neo. This particular look has gained popularity among photographers due to its clean and simple look that gives a neat and uncluttered appearance. Additionally, it enhances natural high contrast which helps your subjects stand out and catch attention. By following my step-by-step -step guide, you can easily create this look yourself and save it as a preset for future use. To join me in this tutorial, simply download our sample files by following the link in the description of this video and edit them on your own computer. Once you have your sample files downloaded and added into the application, we can start. Just like me, you should be starting in a catalog module and you should be looking at the two images that were in the sample file folder. We have this lady with a white flower around and another lady with a white dress standing in front of the beach or some palm trees. Now talking about the minimal white look, obviously for it to work, you're looking for a subject that has some white or clean elements around. So just like in this case, we have these flowers. And in this case, we have kind of blurry, soft highlight background. So this is what you need for it to work. However, once you save the look as a preset, you can always try it on any image and see if it's going to work. However, for the creation of the preset, we're going to be using the lady that has this kind of blooming tree around her. So let's click on it to select it and then move it into edit module. As always, we can do it by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or we can use E on our keyboard. Now, anytime we start editing here in Luminar Neo, the first tool we're going to be going into is the develop tool on our main toolbar. Simply click on it to open it and we're going to start first by going into the optics section. So just click on it and make sure that the auto difference is on. It's just a custom. This is what we do to start. After that, we want to take care of the sharpness and noise. Once again, as we're going to be saving this as a preset, we want to make these more general. So in the noise reduction, simply click on the section and add something between 10 or 15. So we're going to go for the 15 here, then close it and then open sharpness. And again, as it is a preset, we're going to go for 40 here. That's the kind of standard sharpening to start with. Before we close the sharpness tab, we want to make sure that we also add some masking. Let's increase it to somewhere between 60 or 70. And this way we make sure that we only sharpening the areas with the edges, details and texture. Once we finish with this, we can close it and move on to the top part of the tool. Starting from the top, starting with the light section, with the exposure, we want to add a little bit of exposure here. Nothing crazy. I usually like to go around 0.20 or 0.25. After that, we're going to move to the contrast. And here, actually, we're going to bring the contrast down. We want to make the image a little bit flat. So I think around minus 15 will do. For the highlights and shadows, we're going to go for the standard numbers. So we'll start with the highlights, bring it down to minus 50 and then move into the shadows, open them up and go to somewhere around plus 40. Now that's the light section. So we have open the shadows, make the highlights a little bit darker, 
we have made the image a little flatter with a smart contrast slider and added a touch of extra exposure. Now we can move into the blacks and whites. Now usually we go with the blacks down. However, as we creating a bright white clean look, we actually gonna take the black slider and bring it up um, to somewhere around 30. Once we finish with this, we can move on our whites. And as you guessed, for the white look, we want to make it quite strong. So let's bring the whites to, let's say, around 40. Now we are done with our light, blacks and whites. So we can close them and move on in the tool. We're going to come into the curves in a moment. So first, we're going to go into the color section. Here, we're going to add a touch of warmth. And we're going to do that by going into the temperature slider, where we're going to add just maybe one or two. Now, if you use any other application, you will notice that the temperature slider in Luminar Neo is a little bit stronger than in the other ones. Now, let me just reset it and show you. When I add just one, it's already quite warm. And when I add two, it's even warmer. So this slider is a little bit stronger, so keep an eye on that. So I think two will be more than enough. After that, we're going to add a bunch of saturation and vibrance. Let's start with saturation. We're going to go somewhere around 10 and with the vibrance, maybe like five or six. Now I know it doesn't look like minimal white at all, but trust me, we're going to get there. So we are done with the color section. We can close it now and we're going to go into the curves. Now I know that curves can be a little bit overwhelming. However, for this example, just do exactly the same as I'm going to do, but if you would like to learn more about curves, we have a full tutorial on how to use them here in Luminar Neo, and I will make sure that I will put the link in the top right corner of the screen and also in the description of this video. So coming back into our curves, first come first, I want you to make sure that you're on the white point on the beginning. So just the black and white curve. So click on it to make sure. And now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crash the blacks. So we're going to do that by going all the way to the bottom of our curve here. And you will see the point here. So all I want you to do is to just take it and bring it up. And as you can see, we're basically removing the really dark areas. So let's bring it up a bit somewhere around here. And after that, just create one more point. And with this point, just make it so the line is straight. So somewhere around here. So we have the straight line between the two points. Finally, make one more point, just click somewhere on the line and move the point in such a way that the line now balance. We have almost a straight line now. So just position it like this. So we have a straight line on our highlights and we have this shadow bit here down in a corner. Once again, take your time, have a look at it and sit and set it up exactly the way you see it on the screen. So this is how we set our first curve. After this, we are also going to be adjusting the red, green and blue. But what we're going to be doing here is just a simple S curve. Here in a red curve, I want you to add one, two, three and four points. Starting with the one all the way at the bottom, just bring it down somewhere around here. Quiet down. You still want a little circle here. However, you want to bring it really down. After that, we're really creating a very basic S curve. So we're going to take the second point, just bring it down somewhere around here. Then we have the middle point, which needs to be in the middle, making sure that we're creating the nice S curve. And then finally, the last point, we're just going to bring nice up. Now I know the image is looking crazy, but don't worry, we're going to fix that just in a second. After this, we're going to go into our green curve. So click on it. And similarly, we're going to be creating a S curve here, but easier one, you're just going to click once, twice, and for the third time on the top. Now, again, we have the middle point in the middle, which is going to hold our S shape. And now very simply, we can take the point at the bottom, drag it down a little bit. And the one on the top, drag it up, maybe somewhere around the similar shape as the red curve on the top. To finish it off, we will go into our blue curve and we will follow the same shape as the green curve. So one point, 
second point and third point here. I'll make it nicely down here and just bring it down here as well. So that's about it. We have our curves sorted here, make them nice in line and we are done. Basically, by using these S curves on our colors, we are adding more contrast into the colors. So you will see in a moment how that will work in our benefit. For this moment, we can close the curves. We can also close the develop tool and we can move to the next tool. The next tool we're going to be using is the color tool. So we are still on our main toolbar. We are in the essential section and we're going to open the color tool. Here we're going to go to the bottom to the HSL panel, make it all nice and visible and start by clicking on a gray dropdown box and select the hue. Here in hue, we're going to adjust a little bit of colors that affect the skin tones. Those are usually the red, orange and yellow. So starting here with the red, we're going to bring it down a little bit. We want the red to be a little bit more like magenta. So go somewhere around minus 10, minus 11. Equally on the orange, we want the orange color to be more closer to the red. So to do this, just bring it down again to somewhere around minus 10. And to finish it off here in hue, we're going to use the yellow slider and we're going to bring it all the way down to minus 40. So we want our yellow to be really closer to orange. We want the yellow color on the image be more like orange, not like green. So if you want to just copy it, it's 10, 10 and minus 41. After this, click on a gray drop down box again, and this time select the saturation. In the saturation, we're going to be doing much more. We start from the red here and we're going to bring it down all the way to around minus 50. After that, we move to the orange where again, we're going to go somewhere around minus 50 or maybe just around minus 45. Moving on to yellow. Here we want to go stronger and let's go all the way to somewhere around minus 85, maybe even minus 90. Now you can already see how by adjusting the first three sliders, the image is starting to look nicer. However, we are not done. We're going to move into the green where again, we're going to bring it down, maybe not all the way to minus 90, but somewhere around minus 80. Then moving on the cyan and moving somewhere around minus 70. Then the blue again, minus 80 or minus 70, just looking at the image. And then with the purple and magenta, we're going to follow the similar values. We don't have them on this image just for the sake of the preset. We also going to set them to minus 90 and minus 90. So we are done with the saturation. So on the saturation, the first two sliders somewhere around minus 50, because we still want some of the skin tones, hair and color to be there. And then everything else you go keeping an eye on the image somewhere around minus 90 or minus 80. Now we are again done with saturation. So for last time, we click on a gray drop down box and go into the luminance. In the luminance, you can make the colors, the specific colors, brighter or darker. So we start with our red and orange and make them a little bit darker. So we go somewhere around minus 30, similarly on the orange to minus 30. We're not going to play around with the yellow. We're going to leave it the way it is and then just move into the green where again, we're going to make it darker. Keep an eye on the image. I think possibly like minus 50 is about right. We're getting this really nice dark contrast in the greens. I really like that. Then after that, moving on into the cyan, let's just bring it down to somewhere around minus 10. And with the blue, similarly to the green, we're going to bring it down to minus 50. Now with the purple and magenta, again, they are not on this image, so we don't worry about it too much. And I think we can just leave them. After this, we can close the HSL panel. We can close the color tool and we are almost done. Let's have a look at the before and after now. And we can do that by using the backslash or slash key on your keyboard or the eye icon at the bottom of your screen. So let's see before and after. So we almost there. However, let's add one more touch. And for this, we need to go back to our main toolbar, creative section and the mystical tool. Here, we're going to add some nice contrast 
together with the glow. So with the amount slider, let's just bring it up. And I usually like to go somewhere around 20. So let's have a look at that. You can always check the before and after with a quick preview in the top right corner of the tool. And you can see that it looks quite nice. Once we finish here, again, we close the tool and we are finished. So this is the minimal white look. Now moving on to the next step, we're gonna save it as a preset. So let's go to the bottom of our screen, click on actions, and then click on the save as preset. That will bring you into the presets module and it will open the my presets folder in your presets toolbar. As you can see here on the top, we have the new preset and now we have the chance to name it. So we're gonna call this minimal white. Once we finish, we can just hit the enter and it's safe. Now we can come back and we can move back into the catalog. In the catalog, we can now select our second sample file and bring it back into the presets module. In the presets module, we're gonna go into the toolbar and select the my presets. In my presets, we now have the minimal white look. When you hover over it, you can already see the preview of what it's going to do to your image. So simply click on the preset, and once you do that, it will apply the edit, and at the same time, you can use the little slider to adjust the strength of the preset. So if this is a little bit too strong for you, you can take the slider and bring it down. So it really is up to you. But for me, I really like the overall look, the 100%, and that's that. If you want to adjust any of the settings, you can now take the image into edit. And in the edit module, go on the top of your main toolbar, select the edit, and here go through all the settings that is there and adjust it from here. Just before we're going to finish, I want to quickly mention that we have a look like this and many more already created and ready for you to be used in our popular Luminar Neo Power Bundle. To find out more about it, make sure that you visit our website cleverphotographer.com or to purchase it with the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.